All right, welcome back to another episode of Floater Gang. The first round of the NBA draft was uh, just a little bit ago, so we're going to be breaking down our winners, our losers, the biggest surprises, all that junk. Um, so we'll start with uh, let's start with surprises. No, let's start with winners. Let's start with winners. Nick, who's your biggest winner? The Timberwolves. Easily. Wow. Easily. Can't blame you. They got a dynamic playmaker with an, I don't want to say amazing three ball, but because not, he's not a Reed Shepard, but, you know. He four, still got a good he, ass He got a ball. good ass three ball for pennies and change. For a Lay's bag of chips and two quarters is what they got him for. Um, I don't want to talk, I don't want to get too much into like the Spurs side of things. I'll stay more focused on the on Timberwolves side of things. Um. The, the few knocks that uh, are on Rob Dillingham are his size and his lack of defense. I mean, I don't want to say his defensive liability, but he's not good. You know, he's not no Anthony Edwards. You know, he's mm-hmm. not he's not going to be out there. He's not no Kawhi Leonard, right? He just isn't. And he's, ne- yeah. he's never going to be. He's 6'1", 165 pounds. He's not going to be a pain presence. He's not going to be a, the best a perimeter defender. He's just not. But Tipper wasn't have to worry about that. They're the best defense in the league. They have Gobert. They have Ant. They have – they have McDaniel's. McDaniel's. They have like who, who's was Cat. Nas Reed. They have a, a stacked defensive team. A good. Coach. They don't have to worry about that at all. One of their biggest needs was someone alongside and that could just get the show going. Luka like Garza. Just, yeah, they should have used him. Yeah. Someone that could just get out there and you know I don't want to say like spark plug because I mean Rob Dillingham has the potential to start. He does. Not not day one. What? What? You don't think he? You don't think he can? No, 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 no. Not no. this. Not not next season. I doubt next season he will. But I agree. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, again, not day, not day one. But like, you gotta look at the bigger picture here. Yeah. He's nineteen years old. Yeah, you yeah. Know what I mean, next year, I don't think he's gonna be able to like play in the playoffs a ton. You know, I, I, I don't think he could play starter level minutes. Probably not even like six, seventh man level minutes. I think he could get bring out like a Derek Lively type of thing. Like, I mean, yeah, like I think in like you know, I, I mean, I, I wouldn't say Derek Lively had a limited. Role. I mean, like what he did was pretty limited in terms of like he had a role and he, yeah, but he had a role um i i do think he brings another dynamic um he, he's just too small and weak right now for me to say he can make a big impact in the playoffs um but at the end of the day like that you they still picked at 27th like rob dylan picking rob dillingham did not affect their team at all only positively you know? at all they're literally trading up, like for could be like a terrible pick. It could be the thirtieth pick, you know, yeah. Because um, you have Anthony Edwards and Rob Dillingham as your backup, or as your backcourt of the future. No, it's, it's well, and not to mention, game. like you said, this is they were the winner. They did get Terrence Shannon too, who I think is an elite or not elite, yeah, but he's a great yeah. scorer. Yeah, he he can go downhill with the best of them in this draft. Looking um, at and- what they did, they they got two guys that both of them. If one of them doesn't pan out, hopefully one of them will at least decently pan out to fix their need. Their one need, really, throughout the entire deep playoff run. Their one need. They have two guys now. They went into this draft and came out with Terrence Shannon and Robert Dillingham, and all they lost was a 2031 first-round pick and a 2030 pick. That's all they lost. And they came out with Dillingham and Shannon. At least one of those guys if not both of them, hopefully being at least a sizable role player in their future, in their decently long-term future, if not more than that. Because Dillingham is number two on my draft. He does have insane potential. And a lot of people like Shannon a lot, too. So given that, Nick, you're 100% right. They, they killed this draft. He's not fine. It's so it's all, Especially offensively, it's, yeah. It's just I so think weird. another winner here is... Just like house highlights, because that Timberwolves team is just gonna be like producing highlights. And those post game interviews are gonna hit different. Yeah, yeah that's true. all like the all Shit. the like all the, like the dances and dap ups and everything. Yeah. yeah. All right, um, Marvin, who's your winner? Um, my winner is the Lakers. Um, Dalton connects fell to them at number seventeen. 
I think he's a great fit. Like I said, he did fall to them. I mean, he was projected around 10. Um, kept falling. Lakers snatched him right right when they got their pick. They said, all right, he's still out. We're taking him. And I think he's going to be a really good fit alongside Reeves, LeBron, and Davis. I mean, and you saw J.J. Redick. He was he was happier than I've ever seen him after they got to pick Dalton Connect. And, Which is valid. I mean, I can't believe he fell that far. I mean, he's a yeah. top eight player in this class to me, at least like talent wise. Um, and then the fit is just perfect. Uh, I do worry, like, or I don't worry, but like his defense isn't like outstanding. It's not bad though. Um, yeah. So I, I don't think you, I don't think he'll start, but I think he could be a, a great, you know, plug and play segment. And he is a sneaky rookie of the year pick. I, mean, I agree. And I think the Lakers, I mean, timeline wise they're kind of in an interesting position you know what i mean like lebron's on his way out he's not gonna get any younger mm-hmm. but they still have a decent a decent young core with uh yeah. what's his what's his reeves, uh, reeves and Hachimura. christy is that, is that his name christy? Max, christy. Yeah, max christy like they have some good young players so like they have a lot of directions that they can go in you know what i mean i'm not saying one is better than the other like they could be in i don't think they should completely implode their team and like get rid of it i'm not saying that at all but like Connect Four is a good pick because you know he's gonna have day one impact, mm-hmm. but he still has a ways to go. He still has a ways. Hey, like, man. Not, oh, yeah. He still has plenty of potential. He, I mean, I, I I Connect Four was one of my favorite players in drafts. Um, I really liked him. He was a really integral part of Tennessee's March Madness run. He really was. He kind of threw them on his shoulders. But like, he's I, I wanted this person to get him, but they didn't. But again, day one impact. You know what I mean. He's he's gonna he like he, he can, and he's gonna he can be there for the long haul because he's he can, he's only gonna get better. Right. Right. I didn't even know this. I have a I have a number nine on my board. I could would maybe potentially move this up if I knew this beforehand. But the fact that he didn't get any D one offers coming out of high school and he worked his way to get to where he was and he went to Tennessee because he wanted to be challenged and then became the yes. number one player. A lot of people nod guys for their age, and I get that in large part. But guys like this, those are bonus points for me. If you're that old and there's this slope of improvement, this slope of being able to adapt, evolve, uh, evolve and improve, isn't that exactly what you want in a prospect? It, and that makes better. Better. That's money for the future. Fit, he fits perfectly in now to their championship goals, and he fits perfectly into their goals from six years from now. That's why I thought he was definitely good in Miami. Just because it, you know, it just seemed like a Miami. Yeah, he does seem like a Miami type of guy. Yeah, I, that would have been a great pick for them. They have too, too many forwards. They, it's just not their need. They have two different needs, and that's not one of them. I mean, you could argue they need shooters, but that's neither here nor there. Um, I'll get to my winner, who is the Washington Wizards. Surprisingly, um, look, they started draft night out pretty rough, in my opinion. They traded Danny Avia, but that um, wasn't draft night. That was before. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's. So, day. but the actual picks themselves, Alex Sar, I think, probably the best player in the draft. Yeah. Um, just in terms of upside, I think he's the one guy that like you look at him, it's like okay, this guy can be an all star, a high pack, high impact. Just out of guy. curiosity, do you guys think he is right now rookie of the year? Uh, favorite uh, in or in your rookie of the year? I feel like it's so up in the air. Yeah. I agree. I, I, I agree. Yeah. Y'all's favorite, right? Uh, no, I don't have a favorite. Honestly, That's fair. My favorite is uh, Loki. No. I feel like no. I, th- I think definitely rookie of the year is going to be someone day one impact because a lot of this draft was very raw, and that's why I think Shepard could be that. No, but he's going to come off the I bench. Agree. Been to... Um, Devin Carter is going to be the rookie of the year. He's going to come off it. the bench too. No, he's uh, he'd probably come off the bench. No, he's starting. Who are, who are some uh, players starting lineup? Uh, Burner's yeah. coming off the bench. Herder and Monk coming off the bench. Herder won't be on the team next year, um. So uh, it's gonna be, let's see, who's it gonna be? <laughs> it's gonna be Darren Fox, Devin, Zach Levine, Keegan Murray, Demonte Sabonis. Call it. All right. Just Devin Carter at the two, you said? Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, if he if he starts, he has to be at the two. I mean, who's, he's, who's their start? Who's their he, he's like a, he could be like an Alex Crusoe where he plays at three, but he's still like six. Three. Who's who's the? Oh, I agree. Who's their? Like just because he's still shooting guard, have heard her monk. Yeah, oh, okay. I mean, but monk, you want to keep him off the bench. Six man of the year, and then you have monk and Keon Ellis off the bench. And, with Alex Lynn, yeah, with Alex Lynn, Trey Lyles. Anyway, let me get back to the Wizards. Um, 
Their other pick, Bob Canton, top 10 player in the class for me. I love his upside. He, he's one of the best mid-range pull-up shooters at like that age that we've seen in quite a while. Rob Dillingham's up there as well. Um, but then Keyshawn George, I was a big fan of him. Great shooter. He kind of seems like he knows what he's doing out there. Uh, he, he has like some IQ, but he's not doing too much. He can play off ball. Um, he's not super athletic, but I, I do think he's like upside in his handles underrated. So, uh, Lauren, sure. who's your winner? My winner in this draft, I'm going to have to go with the Orlando Magic. Um, I love De Silva, super high on my boy. Uh, maybe a little too high, but I definitely think he is going to – we're going to look back at this draft, and I think he'll be one of the top ten guys to run the draft, um, maybe top five. Uh, honestly, I, I would probably predict top five, uh, top ten for sure almost in my mind. And they got him at 18. Um, They got another freaking German. That is super sick. They got another amazing wing that can pretty much do anything. And I just – I think he's underrated. There's really not any holes in his game, right? All the the, the – the criticism on his game is pretty much things that he's not a lead at or that he's not great at. But there's not really any liability in all of his game at the position that he would probably play, which is a small forward, power forward type position. And so I think he's great value pick. He helps them with their needs, the Orlando, the Orlando Magic, which is shooting and playmaking. He's not going to fulfill all those needs, but it would be kind of crazy if with the 18th pick they got a guy that just completely resolves all their needs. Um, so I love the pick um, all for it. I never considered that pick beforehand, and that's kind of what made me love it. I just never considered De Silva going there, even though he was projected right around there. Mm -hmm. I like the pick as well. For sure. Both players. Should we get to our losers? Losers. I'm going to start with uh, I'll start with Lauren and Nick. I think they oh, feel pretty strong about their same loser. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, in Spurs fashion, they just traded away Johnny Furphy for Juan Nunes. But that's not the first round. In the first round, they traded away <laughs> Brian Wright. And, change. and I think uh, Brian Wright. I don't. Uh, this is what I saw when I saw the Spurs war room. I saw confusion. A war room is that what you? Say? I saw. I mean, that's what they call it. Yeah. I saw confusion. I saw haste. I saw. Uh, Maybe not cool, calm, and collected decision making. Um, Brian Wright was like running around doing something. I don't know what he was doing. I mean, I don't know. Did you see uh, the video of when he was, whenever they traded Rob Dillingham? I I have not. I saw Tim Duncan. Tim Duncan was in there, but um, it was, was like, it, it was oh, like, the crime he, itself. It was it was chaos. Like, so so I saw a report. This was like a beat writer, so I'm not totally sure how like. Uh, reliable this is but once to John Salon was off the board they decided that they were going to trade the pick because he oh was my a guy God. that's oh, disturbing geez. that does not make me feel any better that does not make me feel any better at all yeah or we I just, just make me feel that we literally had no idea what we're doing with the eighth pick if we were to pick Salon I would probably be just as frustrated I mean at least we could pick Salon you know but okay, at least now we're gonna pick a 12 year old, not Salon. He plays like, a think, okay. yeah, and his basketball <laughs> talent is the level of the 12 year olds right now. The trade is just stupid, it doesn't make any sense because okay, these are some ways I think the trade could have and I would have been accepted, acceptable for me in my mind. Yes. Um, it was a trade down this year, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, sure, okay. Um, a lot of people say, okay. They don't want to have to pay someone eight million dollars. That's the that's the eight picks like salary for someone they don't really truly believe in. Okay, sure. If we're gonna go for a free agent this off season, fine. We need to free up some cap space just to get a you know a bigger guy, bigger guy salary wise. Um, then okay, trade trade back in the draft. You don't have to pay as much, but you can still get some guy that could like you know make some motion a young guy that can grow with the team because we're you know it's rebuild is still a long ways away from being done, but to Kind of punt the ball seven years down the field, that doesn't make any sense. We essentially we have pick B. The pick swap could be worthless, so let's just ignore that. Let's the first round pick could also be worthless. The first round pick could also be worthless. It could be the thirtieth pick. It could be the twenty. Both of them could be a 
back 20 pick. So, I mean, like, it just, uh, to me, what happened was. We fucked ourselves. We panicked and we wanted, we, we knew we wanted to trade, but we didn't, you know, the Timberwolves GM, you know. Understood what we were doing. Understood that we were, we, we you know, we wanted to get rid of the pig and that he could lowball us and he lowballed us. And, oh, sorry. and he succeeded. And he succeeded. Amazingly for him. Um, I will. I mean, I'll, I'll, I have, we kind of have mentioned Castle because I mean, even though it, he's he, he was drafted by the Spurs, I just if we're drafting a, a true point guard, I just don't think Castle's our guy. No, that's just me. I... Um, he has great defensive upside. He's six six. You know, that's always size is always great for for a point guard. You know what I mean for any guard, genuinely. But I, I just. I just don't see the vision. Yeah, no, and I mean, I it's not that I don't like him as a player either, but I like, like let's say we would have gotten Dillingham or even Buzelis at four, or whatever, and we say, hey, Castle sold out at eight, let's take him. I think sure. that's valid, but at four, I think it's just too early. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. to be fair, to to make put things into further perspective, um, so we traded that pick for nothing, but let's let's look at next year. So Wembenyama had the Arguably the highest expectations ever his rookie year. Yes, I'm including Magic Johnson, Kareem Abdul Jabbar, LeBron James, all in that conversation. He's certainly up there and he overachieved. He had an insane rookie year. The Spurs, if only he had some help, could take a step next year, right? And you always want your guys, your young guys, you want them growing up or, or developing him in a somewhat competitive environment. You want them making the right habits, learning the right habits, learning a competitive atmosphere, right? We, we hear guys leaving the Hornets saying, yeah, that, that's not competitive. And it shows. They haven't been good for a long, long time. They're kind of a disaster. Um, Pistons are kind of in the same. The Spurs are known to be consistently competitive and develop consistently amazing talent within a competitive atmosphere. And so we want to get back into at least the play in com- competition realm. And we have that chance through Wemby. And if you give Dillingham and Castle to that team, guys like Vassell, who we just extended, guys like Heldon Johnson, who've been playing and really played better, if a guy like Dillingham, who's able to make a splash, and Castle as a playmaker, as a lob threat, as a defender, we can get to that. Right now is the time. I don't know why we traded Dillingham, not because we wanted more picks. No, but because we wanted a 12-year-old. We made a move the Timberwolves would be justified in making and, and saying, yo, let's get a pick in the, in seven years from now. Right now we're competing. In seven years from now, we might want another might want another guy to draft. We don't really need him right now. We need him right now. We get nothing. And Dillingham fell into yeah. a lap. So he was like, perfect. Again, number two in my book. Now, Lauren, what are the scenarios where this trade makes sense? And I know that there's almost little to none. But like, let's say he was. They were trying to like stockpile picks for. It's not little to none. Okay. Here, I'll, I'll give you I the, you. the scenario, just real quick. Um, so I think the Spurs are okay with being bad next year, which is not a bad thing. Clearly, I don't. That's, that's fine, good. but we didn't set ourselves up for next year either. Well, they have a ton of picks next year. First off, I mean, and that next year and a much better draft. But... Yeah, really good. Um, but still, I just don't get why you wouldn't take more. I mean, like, I don't think well, – maybe they're like, oh, there's a lot of guards we like in next year's draft. I don't want to draft two guards here. Like, I think what we learned from the good GMs, just draft the best player when you're – well, well, unless you're, like, the Pistons and you already have, like, five non-spacers then you draft another. But, like, <laughs> you draft the best player, especially around Wemby. Um, well, I think the thing that pisses us off the most, too, is not the fact that we traded him necessarily, but it's the fact that we got shit back for him. I mean, exactly. It's it, the, well, exactly. The it made no sense to begin with, but we didn't even get at least a good package return. We made a illogical trade and got bad return. What are we doing, guys? What are Let's we move doing? Move on to our next loser, Marvin. What do you got? My loser is the New Orleans Pelicans. Mm. We talked about it in the other one. Evis Miss, Missy. I just don't. I'm not high on him, anyways. So there's that, and I don't think he's the right fit for the Pelicans either. And Deron Holmes was out, who then the Nuggets traded up for because they're like, all right, we want to get this guy now. And since the Pelicans didn't, I just, I just think they, they, they screwed up. They should have taken Holmes. They shouldn't have taken Missy, and it's gonna hurt them. Holmes is number fourteen on my board. Great potential, great fit. 
the Nuggets know how to draft, and they seem to have wanted him. The Pelicans went with Missy. Yeah. And it seems like Dron Holmes wanted to go to the Nuggets because he canceled, like, a lot of his workouts. And um, and then they traded up, like, oh, yeah, just in case some team – like, because I think it was – can't remember who. I, I it was Topic. Like, the Thunder didn't even talk to Topic. Or, like, they didn't work out with him. They still took him. Yeah, I mean um, – I, And I think a lot of teams would have been willing to do that with Holmes. But, or at least should have been. I just yeah, had a thought. Um, I, 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 sure. I think I, – I don't know how it didn't come to me before – but the Nuggets definitely traded Holmes for the purpose of trying to combat the Bulls because they were shorthanded. It was literally just Jokic against their army of big guys in the number one defense. I thought you said the Bulls. I was like, what? The Bulls, bro. Watch out. Kobe White coming at you. They're going to be dangerous. And honestly, they're probably my favorite to win the chip next year. The Wolves? Yeah. Yeah, they're going to be second to Thunder. But um, <laughs> I'll move on to my – ultimate losers it's two i think the first one is again the pistons drafting ron holland it, the pick <laughs> so i just said that go like, detroit go detroit i just said oh you got to pick the best player available which not I, when you're detroit I, I believe but like detroit is such a weird scenario because they've been rebuilding for forever and they have so much talent and i think they have some like talent that they could work with but then they just keep digging themselves in a hole by getting guys that just don't help out the other talent. Yeah. Um, so that's De- Detroit, new management, new coach, still the same old Detroit. It's like they just like have like a board of like <laughs> prospects and they just like find fun of themselves and throw a dart. No, I mean, I heard uh, the owner is way too involved, is what I hear. Um, I, I could see that. And also I think maybe they're just like the new GM's like, I don't really care about this core, it's not my core. I don't see a ton of he like, wants to build his own thing. He wants there. to build his own thing, which I think which I get. Which is um, possible. I mean they could potentially trade Ivy or something. Yeah. Mm. Um but I, I kinda wanna see a year like not yeah. Monty Williams with Kate Cunningham and Jerry Andy. But um and then my other loser to the Bucks. Look, AJ Johnson, he may have a fine career. It's not gonna be next season. It's not gonna be that for the next two years that he's gonna be contributing. And that's someone that the Bucks needed. Um, and I, I mean, and the Bucks have other means, kind of, of improving, like trading Bobby Portis, I guess. Um, I don't know. They don't, they don't really like, know they could have gotten, doing. like, Barry Shireman. I think he could, look, like, legitimately contributed. They sort of don't know what they're doing. They have Darvin Ham and Doc Rivers. <laughs> I know. Steering. I'm not necessarily saying it's their fault. Sinking ship. But... They're sinking the ship. The, the ship is yeah. sinking. <laughs> it's a good, like, I liked, I liked the Dane trade. I liked it. Yeah. I don't know. I, I mean, I picked them to win the chip. I liked we it. We all I liked think, it. Yeah. They yeah. kind of just like think they were just like, mm, you know what? I mean, if James let's plays- let's fire AJ Griffin, who Doc Rivers, who got hired next, said, "Why did they fire AJ Griffin?" Like, like realistically, if Dame just plays like Portland Dame next year, they're gonna be they're yeah. Fine. And we've seen like those kind of trades. Sometimes they take a year or two to kind yeah. of like, flesh out yeah. the chemistry. Yeah. Look at Kings, look at Ky- Kyrie and, and Luca. Yeah. The first year, I don't give Matt Ishbia. I know it was I, like Luka, Luka, <laughs> Kyrie was only there. But pretty good. But like they were kind of poop. Right? Yeah, I mean they weren't they weren't necessarily poop, but you could tell they, no, they still had poop. to. They were, they were they poop, dog. They were, they were poop. Then this year they beat the finals. Like it, sometimes it takes a year or two. Like, yeah, you gotta just kind of let things play you gotta out, add to it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Not just like running around like a headless chicken, like not knowing what's going on. Because okay, your your superstars got injured in the in the series against the Pacers, and you lost. Mm-hmm. So, okay, you don't have to freak out. It's not the end of the world. It was a, it was unlucky. Yeah. Try again next year. Build on what you you're building. And all right, all right. I mean, let's get all to right. one part. Yeah, let's get to our surprises. Um, you want to start? I'll start. Um. I didn't even think Zach Eady was going to go first round, genuinely. Really? I'm not huge on Zach really? Eady at all. Fair, but just with projections, I was almost guaranteed that I he thought he was. I thought, I thought the shock of the, the draft was going to be Zach Eady fell out of the first round. He wasn't even invited to the draft room. I, I, I just, you know, whatever. For, and for him to go to the lottery, not just the lottery, top 10, not just top 10, ninth. Okay. Grizzlies taking, it, taking a, a shot. I mean, I don't necessarily say it's a bad fit. It's just surprising. It's, it's an interesting pick. I think it's bad. I don't. I don't. How do you think? How do you how so? It's just the space. Like, I don't think it's going to be that bad, though. I mean, I think. I think he is 
similar in in the Stephen Adams role. But he's so much bigger than Stephen Adams, where I think he can like. Stephen Adams like, is a pretty better. big boy, though. ID is yeah. like even bigger. He's like, I mean, yeah. Adams. If ID if ID's ceiling is Stephen Adams, this is good. This is a great pick. Yeah, yeah, exactly. If, and I Stephen think, Adams at nine. You're kind of I think he could definitely be like a Stephen Adams for them, and I think that's what they're banking on. And ID is also very he, durable. Eating, but yeah, whatever. yeah, that's true. And, and the Grizzlies don't really have a lot of that, you know. Very durable. <laughs> <guy>. <laughs> yeah, rip. What about blue hair? Mark Smart. Mark Smart. He got he hurt. Hurt. He's he's I can't, I, can't, I can't remember what I, I just thought about that. There was like, some wait. buzz he might get traded to Houston, but really, I forgot the exact number. But they had probably like fifty something different starting lineups, and they played like forty different guys throughout the whole season. Lauren, what's which your, is insane. What's your big surprise, Lauren? Uh, my big, my big surprise. Um, there's a lot of them. Um, keep it on a positive note. What Marvin said, Dalton Connect just sliding that far. I had did not have it on my radar that Connect would fall that far, despite the age. That was a shocker. Yeah. Um, the one that shocked me was Tidjan Saloon Saloon at six to the Hornets. Um, I mean, I'm not super high on him. And I just I just didn't expect him to go number six. Like yeah. I, I really did not expect I think expect I knew that, that he was going to go higher than everyone thought he should. Yeah, go. I kind of expected but I did not expect six was six, six was a yeah. Decouver? Decouver? Oh yeah. <laughs> French for old. In case you didn't watch the other episode yeah. yet. Um, I think mine was just Dylan Jones. As a Thunder fan, that's like the last guy. I mean, I didn't even watch him pre-draft. I, I didn't even know if he was going to be a second-round guy. could have mailed it with Filipowski. Yeah. I um, think Filipowski would have been perfect right there. I thought that's what we traded okay. up. I'll be damned if I ever doubt a Presti pick, but... I'm scared. <laughs> I, I'm scared. But, you know, at the end of the day, it's not like this guy. Like, whoever we picked at 26 was probably not going to play, like, major minutes. You know, that yeah, rarely ever happens. Though. I he probably still doesn't play major minutes, yeah. you know. And I think they are legitimately interested in Hartenstein. So um that I think that's why they didn't target a big man. But yeah. Um that'll be it. Um crazy first round. Uh crazy trades happen. Uh hopefully there's more. Pull their game out.